Speed is a critical part of the user experience. If our software takes longer than 100 milliseconds to respond, it can feel sluggish and slow. Throw in the network connections that most programs rely on today, and the picture is even more bleak. People expect fast experiences, and the things we care about, like revenue and engagement, take a big hit when we let them down. While there's a lot of technical solutions out there for speeding up software, there's also a set of design solutions. These techniques don't physically speed up network response times, but they do go a long way towards making interfaces feel faster. The simplest way to make an interface feel responsive is to respond to user input. Note on Google's search application, right when someone taps on a user interface control, a little animation acknowledges their touch. This interface change happens instantly to let people know that their actions have taken effect. Google also uses animation effectively to convince you things are loading when in reality they aren't. Notice how the page loading in Google's app slides in from the right, then gradually fills in from the left. So when we tap that link, in comes the animation, and the page loads next. These animations happen before the page has the ability to actually load, but it makes things feel as if that loading process has already started. We can also speed up time by performing actions optimistically. That is, not waiting for a server to confirm someone's action and instead reacting as if it did. Instagram's service performs many actions optimistically, such as liking a photo or leaving a comment. The result of your action shows up instantaneously on Instagram, even when the server has not confirmed that the action has gone through. This technique can also be applied to more complex interactions by storing local versions of things. Here on Polar, when you ask a question about the show to see in Las Vegas, it appears instantly in your feed as if it's there. Pull the refresh to get the latest stuff from the server, and you'll note it's missing. What actually happened? We've created a local version of this question on the application. That local version is fully interactive. That is, you can leave comments, you can like it, and you can share it. Meanwhile, in the background, we're actually trying up to three times to get the real version to the server. And we have a background process that kicks off every 10 minutes to make sure things are good. It takes a lot of back-end work, but the end result is worth it. That instantaneous feeling of creating something and seeing it live is worth the extra back-end effort. Last but not least, we don't actually have to wait until even people are done with their actions before our apps can act. Performing actions in the background can get things done when people aren't even paying attention. For instance, Instagram starts to upload your image when you're busy entering a caption, deciding where to put it on a map, and how to share it. With instant feedback through visual changes and animations and getting things done before servers and people are actually ready, we can make applications feel much faster than they actually are. And in this case, perception really does beat reality.